tuning in tonight. <clears throat> so if you've been paying attention for the, to the last few weeks, you know, I hadn't been feeling very well, but I am much, much better. I'm back to my old self today, as I'm sure you'll see. Although maybe a little coughing, but I'm going to try to slow my voice down so I'm not so rushed. So today I am going to be talking about psychic abilities. So if you're new here, I'm going to kind of visit for a few minutes and then I'm going to open up the lines to take your questions. Um, but today we're going to talk about psychic abilities. And one thing that I'm often asked is, well, do I have psychic abilities? And one, one of the things about being human is that we all have psychic abilities. It's just that we don't recognize that that is something that is innate in all of us. We all have the ability to send, receive, and translate information from the world around us. We act kind of like there's there's two parts. So we kind of act like a television broadcast station, you know, so like CBS, they send their broadcast out into the ethers and so that's one half that we send <clears throat> but then the other half is we act kind of like a television set where we can take these invisible signals that are out in the air like a cell phone signal and bring them into us and translate in them into some kind of information some kind of message you know, and I think most people can recognize, can feel, can sense, can intuit when there's someone that has just really bad energy and, you know, you walk by them and you're like, oh, oh my God, you know, wait, let me cross the street real quick. Um, <clears throat> it's because that is that ability in action. I'm going to get in a little bit more detail, but that is just kind of in a generic sense. You know, it's interesting because when people that aren't familiar with psychic stuff, you know, they, they think you can read your mind, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to read your mind. And it really doesn't work that way. You know, what we broadcast is our emotions and our emotional state. And so that's what we can pick up on. Now there might be images tied to that or, you know, uh, beliefs tied to that, but what we're really broadcasting is our emotional state and not really, you know, like I'm thinking of the number three, it, it, you know, it, it, for most people, there might be people that, that can do that, but for most people that use their uh, intuitive gifts, it doesn't work that way. And so there are four primary different psychic abilities. There's clairvoyance, that's our ability to see mental images in our mind's eye. So for example, if I say to you, can you see your car parked in the driveway or the garage in your mind? Or can you see the face of your children or your parents or your partner, husband, wife, you know, significant other in your mind's eye? That is where clairvoyance comes in, you know, you, you actually see pictures like on a TV set, except in your head. Clara audience is the ability to receive uh, more audio information. And so sometimes people can be confused with that ability because there's the chatter that happens from our mind, but then there's us receiving information from spirit. Um, you know, I joke around, you know, my Clara audience, I'm, I'm not particularly audio, uh, but I have the peanut gallery and they kind of sit off to my right side and they tend to be the best backseat psychics because I'll be in the middle of a session working with someone and they'll be like, no, don't tell her that, you know, or they'll yell at me for something, you know, trying to get my attention. 
Um, but there, there is this, you know, audio quality to it, like listening to the radio. Then there's clairsentience, which is our ability to feel, to sense energy. You know, so like if you're feeling bad vibes from someone, um, you know, that is your clairsentience at work. If you feel like you're sensitive, you know, the word empath comes up a lot. You know, an empath is someone that feels energy. And so empath equals clairsentient. You know, so, you know, my favorite clairsentient example is if you can go into Walmart and actually get your shopping done without like wanting to run out of the building really fast or have a time limit before you start spacing out, you are probably sensitive to energy and you probably have some clairsentient abilities. <clears throat> and then the last one is clairconsciousness where you just know things off the top of your head and you don't really know how you know, but you just know, you know. Um, and many times our clairconsciousness, you know, it, it bypasses our cognitive thinking and so usually when information comes in on that level, um, it, it's always true. And I joke around that, you know, my clara consciousness is directly connected to my mouth. And I will make these often very flippant comments that tend to be beyond true and information that I'm not supposed to know and definitely not sharing it with people. One of the things about psychic abilities, <coughs> excuse me, is it's like dancing you know there are people like fred astaire and ginger rogers who can dance the night away and they look beautiful and you want to watch them and then there are other people that can barely keep time to the music you know and it's not that those people aren't receiving information they're just not very good at it you know and so we can be anywhere on that spectrum between really good and really open to not so much, but even the people that are not so much still can dance. They're just not very good at it, if that makes sense. So you might wonder, you know, how can you start to recognize when you're receiving that kind of information? And, um, you know, and one of the ways to do that is to just start paying attention to raise your awareness to what's going on inside. You know, so I always give these really bad examples, you know, one being for some reason you wake up in the morning and you're getting ready for work and you, this thought crosses your mind that says, oh, well, maybe I should take a sweater. And you're like, you look outside and it's beautiful and the sun's shining and you're thinking, man, what do I need a sweater for? And then you get to work and they have the temperature down at 65 degrees and you're freezing all day long. That's why you were supposed to take the sweater. So it doesn't really matter that you didn't take the sweater. My point to you is to pay attention to that, to sit there and kind of rewind the tape and go, oh, I should have listened to myself. You know, I should have taken that sweater. And what you might find is that there are situation after situation where you're getting the message but you're not listening to it and you're not paying attention to it. So my suggestion to you, <clears throat> if you want to, you know, tap into your psychic abilities is to start paying attention to what's going on inside and then following the messages you receive. And sometimes they might seem really weird, but you, they might send you up. They might set you up for success down the road. Okay. So I'm going to be opening up the chat room to questions. Uh, before I do that, if somebody wants to schedule a private consultation with me, wait, wait, I got a cute little banner. Hang on. Do, 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 do. There it is. You can go to my website, soulhealer.com. If you are viewing this on Facebook, please like me, Dr. Rita Louise on Facebook. If you're one of my YouTube peeps, um, if you would subscribe to my channel, Just Energy Radio on uh, YouTube um, and, you know, pay attention to what's going on. This is an open forum. So, you know, you might be on my, you know, my friend list, 
But if you know other people that might want or need my help or support, you know, whether it's in a private converse consultation or coming here to get a free reading, I do welcome you to bring all your friends and tell them all about it. Um, one last thing before I open up the lines is I am thinking about moving this session to Thursday night. So instead of being Monday Night Live with Dr. Rita Louise, it would be Thursday Night Live with Dr. Rita Louise. And I'd love to get some feedback. Also, if there is a topic you would like for me to talk about, you know, in this opening phase of these uh, live streams, please send me a message about that too. I can talk about so many things and then, you know, sometimes I sit there scratching my head. Well, what would be a good topic to talk about today? And sometimes I know, other times, uh, not so much. Okay, so anyway, I am going to open up the chat room for your questions. And um, let me say hello to everybody that's in here and we will get started. So, hey, Nina. Hey, Rita. Ooh, Rita, hi. Uh, Susie, Miss Tanya of soulspressions.com. Uh, Mr. Dan. Hey, Mr. Dan. Misty. Hi, welcome. Shonda, nice seeing you here. Thank you for coming. <coughs> okay, so let me just look to see. So do I have any questions? I have a lot of hellos. Hi, everybody. Post. Oh, wait. Banner, banner. There we go. Post your detailed questions below in the chat box. Okay. Hey, Jacqueline. Um, all right, so that was Dan. Okay, so Misty, I don't know if you want me to post that up there. Is there a question tied to your question? <coughs> okay, so Misty says, um, good evening. Hello, good evening, everyone. I have stage four melanoma, they say. So if you would like some uh, a second opinion on that, um, I would be happy to do that. And if you do, if you could say war in your body, they're saying there's something going on, that would be great. Okay. Okay, Missy did come up with a question. Yes. Should I stay on the targeted chemotherapy? Uh Okay, so Misty, I'm feeling like you are getting a 55 to 60% benefit from the targeted chemotherapy, you know, so that there is benefit versus no benefit. And actually, you know, 55 to 60% is really not all that bad. Um, I'm hoping, you know, and I'm, I'm gonna say it this way, that you were doing other things to support your body, you know, taking vitamins, taking things to help keep you kind of detox, vitamin C, vitamin D, calcium and magnesium. You know, and I could spit out a whole giant list of supplements that would support your body as you go through this treatment. You know, I don't know if you're having some issues with nausea, which might limit what you might want to do. But anything that you can do to support the health and nutrition of your body as you're going through the chemo, I think that would be a very worthwhile process. You know, I've worked with some clients that were getting chemo and did energy work with them. And their response to me was that the doctors were very surprised, especially once the chemo was done at how fast they recovered from kind of that whole ordeal. So that might be something to consider. Oh, okay, let's see. All right, so Missy, I hope that helps. And if you have a follow-up question, please just go ask it down below. Okay, Susie wants to know, will I find true love again? Okay, Susie. So I always kind of take a different angle, a different approach on this. 
Um, you know, and I kind of pull in law of attraction ideas. Um, you know, because many times when people say when they're looking for, you know, to find true love again, many times they have things that are keeping them from finding true love again. And when I look at your energy, I just, I don't know, frustration comes up for me. Um, you know, some anger, frustration. I feel like there's still some healing that you need to do. Um, there is all, also kind of like this, like need, almost a codependent kind of need tied there. And the reason I'm bringing that up is that, yes, you could find, and I'm definitely air quoting this, true love again, but I feel like in the place you're at, right now that anything that you would attract into your space, anything that, you know, any relationship that you would end up creating would end up down the road, road being really toxic. And so I would like to suggest you spending some time working on you, working on clearing your space so that you can be happy with you and they just add to your happiness and you don't look to them for happiness for yourself because that just, it just opens the door for the very unhealthy, narcissistic, yucky people to step right through. Again, follow question, ask below. Okay, so Rita, my namesake said, you were spot on about my present situation. You gave me a reading back in December. Woohoo! thank you, Rita. Okay, let's see. Chris and Jerry. So I'm assuming this is Jerry again. I have a dental appointment tomorrow. Really ner nervous. Any predictions as to how it will go? Chipped a tooth. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I'm... I'm going to make the assumption, Jerry, that it's a pretty big chip that you have, which is why it's making you nervous. Um, my feeling is, is that, you know, they're going to give you two options that they can repair it, but not really make any like super long term guarantees on it because it is pretty big um, or they'll want to cap it. I feel like where it's sitting right now is kind of on that borderline. You know, I feel like if they're able to repair it, that you will get a number of years of repair out of the tooth uh, before you need to take the next step and do something more severe. And so, um, you know, if it was me, I'm kind of cheap. That would be the path that I would probably take before doing something deeper, more serious. But, you know, I think with dental work, you know, and this sounds terrible, but it really kind of depends on how much money you're able to throw at it. Um, I mean, I feel like the root of the tooth is fine, you know, and so that's kind of where I'm um, on the line, you know, can they repair it with a filling or would they want you to go ahead and get a cap put on it? You know, but caps, even with insurance are still, you know, like 800 bucks with insurance, um, you know, out of pocket. So again, follow up. Post it below, below. Okay, so Rebecca wants to know, and I'm not sure I'm going to have an answer for you, for Rebecca, but I'll take a look. What was the purpose of me having recurring vertigo? You know, I'm not really a proponent of, you know, like these weird things happen to us because, you know, there's some weird karma that we're clearing. Um, I get the impression that your vertigo had to do with congestion in your ear canal. Um, hmm, 
Okay, interesting. You know, so I kind of shifted my focus from inside your body to kind of around you. And I got a slightly different answer. Um, I get the impression that one of the things that it was trying to get you to do or teach you or kind of push you toward is to being more in the present moment to being more grounded, to paying more attention with the paying attention part being the key words to what's going on with you and what's going on around you. You know, and I feel like that's something that you've really been working on and looking at, you know, so, um, you know, so, yeah, that's my answer. Moving on. Okay, so let's see. <coughs> okay, so Misty said, she so Misty had the question about cancer, and she put, yes, food to treat cancer. So Misty, um, you know, I don't know if you're doing anything like juicing or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm just going to put in my naturopathic two cents, you know, much of the food that we eat, even if you're really trying to eat clean, can be questionable as far as, um, you know, the nutritional aspect of it. <coughs> I think that juicing is going to give you more nutrition, you know, especially if you're juicing organic fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, or taking some kind of dietary supplement, you know, and those you can get in the liquid form if getting pills down or keeping pills down are not working for you, you know, or there are actually a lot of, um, you know, like protein powders that are chock full of vitamins and minerals. But no, I think, you know, really working with your food is a great adjunct. You know, I'm just, you know, because you have cancer, you know, and I'm going to say it very specifically because you have cancer, it's kind of like you have to take the regular stuff and kind of put it on a little bit of overdrive. And so I, you know, there's part of me that wants to encourage you to bump it up just a notch, just a notch. Okay. So Rita wants to know what I see in her near future. So Rita, I love the name. But I don't um, predict the future. So, but if you have a question about a specific situation, usually I can look at the probability of what's going on, but not necessarily, you know, say, oh, well, on Tuesday, this is going to happen, if that made sense. So, if you want to come back with a more specific question, I would love to help you. Okay, so we have a troll in the house, Alexander Mary Lydia. And, and she wants everybody to send friend requests to get a reading, but Alexander, you need to go away. We don't like trolls in here. And if you don't go, I'm just going to keep tormenting you. <coughs> Thank you, Tanya. So Tanya said, Alexander, Mary, Lydia, you're being reported. Stop spamming. We hate spammers. Spammers. <clears throat> Thank you, Miss Cindy. Cindy said, go away. You're not welcome. All right. All right. Well, this was kind of an interesting question. Okay. When will my auntie unblock my number call me. It's been three years, not blood related, but we had a special connection. I'm more mature now. Is there a way to speed up my manifestation? <coughs> hmm. So I don't get the imp impression that your aunt is going to reach out to you and just for some reason decide to unblock you. Um, I don't know. I feel like you hurt her feelings, you know, that there were issues that were going on in your life that involved her or, you know, I don't really know the details. I just get the impression that 
you know, she really needed to take a step back from you. And I feel like, you know, kind of the only way of potentially getting her back in your life is to perhaps, you know, send her an email, you know, if you know where she lives, send her a actual real letter in the mail and, and apologize and own up to whatever happened, you know, and take responsibility for, um, the situation, you know, and it's been three years and you might be more mature now. Um, and so that relationship, you might be able to repair that relationship, but I, I am going to tell you, it's like in her mind, there's been some, you know, serious damage done. And even if she opened up communication, it is going to take some time for her to really trust you. So I'm not sure what you think about that, but I'm just kind of putting that out there. Um, but having the expectation that she is going to unblock you, I don't see that happening at all. You know, so if you want to recreate that relationship, you will need to reach out. And in the same breath, you have to be prepared for her to say no as well, because it's her choice. It's her life. And if she doesn't want to have a relationship with you, you can't make her, you know, so I'm kind of giving you a bunch of different angles, but that would be really the next step would be for you to use an alternative way to reach out to her and apologize. Okay. So we're back with Susie, who is asking about her relationship space. And she said, what steps should I take for working on myself? Okay. So Susie, there's something that is called the inner critic. And the inner critic is that voice inside our head. So there's the voice of spirit that tells us good things to do, like take a sweater. And then there's the voice inside our head that tells us how stupid we are and how lazy we are and how fat our thighs are and how bad our hair looks and, and you know, pretty much any really awful thing that possibly could be there. And I feel like you have a pretty active inner critic um, that gets in the way of you radiating out this level of self-love and self-confidence. You know, so there's one with addressing that inner critic um, and telling it to shut up. Um, but then there's also doing things to increase your level of self-love. And I feel like, you know, that might be the easier one to actually like take action on, you know, what can I do to be loving to myself today? Um, I feel like it's really easy for you to love other people, but it's much more challenging for you to receive that love from them, you know, which includes receive that love from yourself. And I feel like that would be a good, you know, those two things would be really good first steps for you to start working with. Okay. Okay, so Jacqueline, I don't know if you're the one that wanted me to tell you about the future. That's still just saying future. Okay, so I'm going to cut say this in a different way. Um, so Jacqueline said, Dr. Reader, wonder if you can tell me what I need to do right now. Okay, and right now about what? You know, so Jacqueline, what's going on that you need some guidance on? If you could be a little more specific about that, that would be great. Okay, Chris and Jerry are back. Thank you, you were right. Woohoo! I try. All right. So, hey, Miss Joy. Okay. Many years ago, you gave me a health reading. It did not disappoint. Can you bring me any current information that I should think about or validate? So, Joy, I remember giving you a reading, and you're right. It was a long time ago. So, if you could refresh me on what the issue was or kind of point me in a direction, I would be happy to respond. Okay, let's see.
Okay. So Joycey's back, who was asking about her aunt. And so she's come back and said, or another way to ask, does she think about me? Does she miss me and want me back in her life and call me her niece again? I mean, I feel like she thinks about you, Joycey, but I also feel like there is this hurt that she experienced, you know, because of whatever happened with you. Hurt, betrayal, you know, something in that area. Um, and I feel like if she can't trust you, she doesn't want you back in her life. And in order for her to call you niece again, she would need to trust you. You know, again, I'm going to go back to what I said, you know, having apologizing to her and taking ownership of whatever, you know, excuse the way I'm saying this stupid thing that you did um, would open the door to begin healing the hurts. You know, because without healing the hurts, you know, and just thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to step through the door and it's going to be that way it was before. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay, so let's see. So, Tanya, I don't know if you send a message. I see you up there, but I'm not seeing anything. Okay, Kaylee, um, I don't have any messages for you. You need to ask a more specific question. I don't talk to dead people, uh, but you need to ask like a real question, not super generic like that way. Okay. All right, so Rita, hi again, Rita. And she wants to know, see, this is, would be a more specific question. Will I be moving anytime soon? So Rita, the impression that I'm getting is that there's a part of you that would like to move. And, but then there's another part of you that the idea of moving seems almost overwhelming. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, so I feel like there's this little piece that, you know, wants to procrastinate about the whole thing. Um, you know, with that said, my feeling is, is it's going to be like a year Next summer, when, if you're going to move, you're going to move, you know, I feel like, you know, sometimes a desire has to build up inside of us for us to finally want to take action to do something about it. And I'm feeling like that you haven't gotten there, um, you know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I also feel like there's a lot going on in your life right now. So to add a move and find a place to live and deal with all that is just like, you know, more on the pile um, where I'm feeling like next year it will be better, easier. Um, you can use this time to really sit down and figure out where you want to go you know, and then start working on that creation um, of, you know, and that mock-up and that manifestation of the perfect place for you. So I hope that makes sense, you know, but I'm feeling like not for a year, like not, you know, so I don't know anytime soon if that you mean like in the next couple of weeks, but I'm feeling like not for about a year, year and a half. Okay. Okay, so we're back with Joycey and her aunts. I have to let her contact me first so she sees I've changed. I was codependent and obsessed at the time, didn't respect boundaries. I've matured a lot. Um, and so, Josie, you know, I, I'm kind of sticking with what I've said, you know, and if she said don't contact me, then you need to respect that boundary. You know, I don't feel like she is going to be the one to make first contact. You know, that's what I got. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm backing up here a second. All right. So. All right. So Jacqueline wants to know what she needs to do. 
on her spiritual path? Like, what's her next step? So Jacqueline, I mean, I feel like you've been doing a lot of work on yourself. I feel like you have really been working on um, detoxing your inner world, you know, so I think that that's really great. Um, one of the things that I'm feeling about you is that there's still this level of anxiety that you're experiencing and when i look at your energy body your grounding your aura your chakras that whole thing um i'm not feeling like you're grounding real well um all right and excuse me if i yawn but i'm poking around with her energy i get the impression that when things happen you kind of get them out of your mind, which is great, but it takes you a while to let them go, to let those things go. You know, so I don't know if you have engaged in a meditation practice or yoga or something that will get your energy moving a bit better. Because when we are grounded, when our first chakra is connected to the earth via a grounding cord, it makes it so that we can let go of the energy that we're holding on to and release it. I mean, I feel like you're doing a good job in a lot of different areas of your body of letting go, but then ultimately it's not discharging as good as I would like to see it from your body and meaning via the first chakra. So I hope that wasn't too technical for you. Um, and if it was, um, let me know. Okay, we're back with Joy and her health thing. You gave me a reading that was pretty much described an illness that I may have. Didn't know exactly what it was. Um, I needed up being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Ah, neither of us knew it at the time, even though I had been feeling that something was off. Anything new you might be getting for me? Okay, Miss Joy. Okay, so I'm feeling like this is more emotional than necessarily physical, um, but I just am really sensing a lot of heaviness in your chest and in your lungs. Um, you know, and again, I feel like it has more of an emotional component, you know, and I hate even going here, you know, because I love you to death, uh, you know, on air. So hopefully no one knows you. Um, <laughs> But I just am feeling like there's a lot of like emotional pain or grief that you're trying to process through, um, almost like you've been going around with kind of a happy face on, but you haven't been really happy. Um, you know, I feel like, well, one, that's not good. Um, you know, but doing things to shift that energy, you know, what I was just talking about, grounding, meditation, yoga, breaking the leaves in the yard, going to the gym and releasing. Um, you know, there's kind of this woe is me energy tied to it, kind of victim -y energy tied to it. Um, and I feel like there's not anything you should feel guilty about or bad about. And, you know, I feel like the energy should be more like, whoo, got rid of that and, and, and shake it off and move forward because there wasn't anything that you could do to change it or have it be different. And so maybe that's what I keep getting is that there's some level of guilt going on inside of you that I would like to suggest, you know, 
let it go off. So I hope that helps. Okay, so Rita said, my daughter sent you a friend request. Her name is Rachel Swan. So Rita, if I don't have a whole bunch of friends in common, I won't accept the friend request. But you can suggest that she like Dr. Rita Louise on Facebook. That's Dr. Rita Louise on Facebook. It has my wonderful face in the little profile picture versus a poodle in a tinfoil hat, which is my Facebook one. Um, and she will get notified of all the live streams that are happening. Um, and so that, you know, cause that's my more public profile. And so that would be what I would like to recommend. Okay. So Jacqueline, um, I'm assuming that what I said made sense to you. So, oh, I'm hoping that it did. Okay, all right. So I'm not an astrologer. So being a psychic doesn't mean you're an astrologer at all. Uh, I don't know. Horoscope that I keep reading horoscopes that predict great things for me. My birthday is June 1st. Do you see anything? Uh, You know, so this is the way I look at it, you know, is where is your energy? You know, are you vibrating on a high level of energy? Are you kind of in like the dumps and the drags and vibrating at a low ener low level energy? And Nina, I just get the impression that things have been good for you, that you've kind of been on your game and on your mark, um, you know, and life has been seeming good, has been feeling good, you know, and someone said to me at one point in time, you know, ride the wave. Um, so, you know, in based on law of attraction, you know, the higher your energy is, the higher your vibration, the more you're going to attract good things to you. You know, the lower your energy is, the lower your vibration is, the crap of your stuff you're going to attract to you, you know? And so whatever you're doing to keep your vibration high, keep doing that because, you know, at least in this moment, it's working. Okay. Okay. Um, so Jacqueline wants to know, do you think a grounding mat would help? Is something more, is something more like a shortcut? I mean, I think a grounding mat would help, but, you know, God loves people that help themselves, you know, and so taking up a practice of meditation, taking up a practice of doing yoga on my webpage, you know, I wish, I do wish there was a way I could post stuff in here on my webpage, soulhealer.com. There is an article uh, called grounding something. I don't know. Um, it's not that hard to find. And in that article, there's actually a link to a meditation about grounding. You know, one of the things about learning to work with tools is that you might not always have your grounding mat with you. You know, you might be in your car and somebody cuts you off. You might be at work and somebody does something stupid. Um, and so if all you can rely on is your grounding mat, you're not able to do anything in the moment to help reduce the impact of what's going on. And so, I mean, I don't really know about the grounding mat. I've never used one, so I don't know. Um, you know, but I would highly recommend, you know, start developing a toolkit that you can use. I mean, you know, I will sit there and I like have a breathing practice. I will do the ho Ho'oponopono. I will do this exercise, this I am exercise. I mean, I have like all of these different things that I will do kind of depending on what's going on and how I'm feeling to kind of shift my energy because sometimes, 
if you only try to do one thing, you get stuck in your own energy and it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So having other things that you can use, especially things that you use when you're in good energy, because they're going to be more effective when your energy is low or bad or funky or you're in a cranky mood or whatever. So that, that, that would be, that would be my opinion on it. Okay. Narcy, I'm so glad you tuned in. I am feeling much better. And I sent you an email, which I'm assuming at this point in time went to your spam box, but we need to talk so we can visit. Um, and I am feeling better and I, we need to talk anyway. Yeah. Okay. Ask a question. Okay. So Rachel wants to know, will I ever be able to buy my own home? <sighs> Rachel, that's a little bit of a loaded question, but let me take a look. So based on what I'm seeing, you know, and this, Rachel, I don't even want to say this out loud. You know, I'm feeling like there is that your income isn't super great. How's that? I mean, I feel like you do okay, you know, and I feel like you try to live pretty frugally, which I think is great. Um, but I don't get that there are these giant chunks of change coming in that you have all this discretionary income you know, for you to do something with, you know, but sometimes when we're in situations like that, it becomes more of a process, you know, so is it possible for you to put a hundred dollars, you know, and I'm going to say a week away in the bank or a hundred dollars a month. And I know that that doesn't sound like much, but it does add up, um, over time and i feel like if you are directed and if you are focused on buying that house and having that be a goal then doing the things you need to do to get some money in the bank like i don't get the impression it, it, that it's really about making the house payments i feel like it's more about coming up with the you know the down payment and the closing costs you know i feel like that's the piece that is really holding things up. Um, and I feel like that might be a strategy you could use to get you to the place where you can buy your own home. Okay. All right. So Jacqueline said that was helpful. So grateful for your time and energy. God bless. Okay. We'll invite all your friends and have them come get a reading or schedule a private session at soulhealer.com. Okay, so Charlotte, that's kind of a uh, predict the future-y kind of question, but let me take a look. Okay, so Charlotte says, hello, when will I go to the police academy? Already wrote the test, waiting to be called for the next step, which is physical assessment. You know, so I, I don't want you to like hold me to this answer, but you know, the feeling I get is that they're not really moving particularly fast on anything. Um, and so the impression that, that I'm getting is that you might not hear from them for like three or four months, which I think is really sad and pathetic that, um, you know, you would have to wait that long you know, so I don't know if there are, you know, like they have windows where they do stuff. I don't, you know, I, I don't understand their process, but I'm not feeling like there's a lot of activity happening on their end, even though you would like for that to be. Okay, so I hope that helps. Okay, so Rachel says, see, I love, thank you. All right, I want to say this first. Thank you everyone for providing feedback you know <clears throat> i sit here and i do these things and I'm, I'm like the talking head and even though all right i'm going to be big headed here a second 
I know that I'm good. But it is always nice to know that I'm hitting and, you know, and get feedback. So Rachel, who wanted to know about a house, said that was so spot on. That gave me chills. That's what's been holding me up. So see, yay. I love it. Rachel, thank you so much. Okay, so I have about, I don't know, six more minutes here. If anybody else has a question. You know, earlier I was talking about psychic abilities and how we all have psychic abilities. Okay, so, so Cheryl says, it's been quiet in my region. The intake takes place around April. Yeah, so, you know, it's still going to be a couple of months. So, minimally a couple of months, Charlotte. So great, thank you. Um, you know, so I'm gonna throw this out to the people listening. You know, do you know what channel your psychic abilities work on? Are you a clairvoyant? Are you a clairaudient? Are you clairsentient? <coughs> or do you have clara consciousness? And if you don't know, would you like to know what your primary channel is? Please post your question in the chat box. And I'll try not to cough. <coughs> Thank you, Rita. So Rita said, love your readings. Ooh, me too. Okay, so Jacqueline said yes. So I'm guessing you would like to know what channel you work on. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, that's what I kind of figured. See, I'm psychic and I knew your question in advance. Okay, so, well, I mean, Jacqueline, I think you already know that you're pretty empathic and I. I think it's interesting because I feel like you think that that's your primary channel, but it's not. <coughs> your primary channel is that you're clairvoyant. You see images in your mind's eye. And, you know, and this is not abnormal, you know, for anybody. You know, many times people that tune in on clairvoyant levels, you know, they see images in their mind's eye. And they often make the assumption that the images that they're seeing is just their imagination when it's not, you know, so one of my first like real live psychic abilities, I was at the Berkeley Psychic Institute studying and really early, I had been in their training program about three weeks and we were doing this reading for this woman. There was a whole group of us. And I don't know, the, the other psychics were talking about, you know, her contracts about this and her this about that. <coughs> and I just kept seeing this woman with long red hair walking up to a workstation and slamming her purse down, which I don't know what to even think about that. And so when everybody else was done, they asked if anyone else had something to say. And I raised my hand and I talked about this woman with red hair and slamming her purse down. And the woman validated that that indeed was what was going on, that she had a woman that worked for her with long red hair that was very angry. Well, now we have another troll coming in. Sally McLean, go away, troll. Um, you know, and so sometimes you think it's your imagination, but it's not. It's your intuition. Sally McLean, go away. We only got five minutes left. So, well, okay, Bobby, I did see your post. Um, you know, so sometimes we think it's our imagination, but it's not. It really is a message coming in for us. Okay. Uh, troll all right so bobby says where do i go from here for my career mm -hmm. 
You know, Bobby, I just get the impression that what you're doing right now is fairly new to you. You know, so I don't know if it's a new job or a new opportunity that you've just gotten. Um, but I feel like there's still a lot more that you can learn or could still be learning where you're at right now. Um, you know, it's almost like, you know, the, the, the image that I'm getting is that, you know, it needs to ferment like wine and you should just kind of relax into what you're doing and love what you're doing because your next step will come out of that versus you trying to rush and you trying to push it forward to being something better, different. You know, it's not time for better, different. It's time to just kind of chill and be and take it all in um, because that will give you the time, experience, whatever that's necessarily necessary for you to take that next step. Okay, so Narcy says that, yes, my email was in spam. See, Narcy, I am psychic. I knew my email was in spam, and I did reply. Okay, all right, so there's only a couple of minutes left, so I am going to sign out. Again, if you would um, like to schedule a private consultation, please stop by soulhealer.com and send me a message, and we can set up a time. Um, please do, if you're, if you're one of my Facebook peeps, please go and like Dr. Rita Louise on Facebook. You know, I do post the uh, live streams on that as well as anything else that I have coming up in my life. And so that's a good way to keep in touch with me. I'm not real good at accepting friend requests. So the like Dr. Rita Louise, you know, keeps us in connection. Uh, if you are a YouTube person, please uh, subscribe to Just Energy Radio um, on YouTube, Just Energy Radio. And um, I don't know. I think that's all I got. So I will see you again next week. Um, if you have any comment about moving to Thursday night, I would love to hear from you. But until next Monday... I'm Dr. Rita Louise. This is Monday Night Live. Till next week, be blessed.